everyone. Welcome to today's webinar. Uh, I have the first important question of today. Can you all hear me and see me? Please type in the chat so I can see your answers. Super, super, super. Um, Paul, Pano, if you want to uh, start sharing your videos as well, fantastic. So let's get started immediately. My name is Sara Cortellazzi. I'm Senior Product Manager here at LearnWorlds. And with me today, uh, we have Pano Sioso, CEO of LearnWorlds, and uh, Paul Schneider, Senior VIP, sorry, Senior VP of uh, business, uh, business Development at Domino. So and definitely, start... and definitely a VIP. So yes. it, it wasn't the slip of the VIP. tongue. So it was Thank a slip of the tongue, but on point. Honored to be here. <laughs> Fantastic. So before we get started, um, actually, I and you know answer all your questions about scorms. Um, I actually have a couple of housekeeping things. Uh, first thing, a recorded version of this webinar will be shared uh, with you on Monday all, with all the registrants. And the second thing is that we love to hear from you. So uh, please. Even if you didn't send the question beforehand, type it in, in the Q&A section, possibly. And Renata, who is also from, uh, from Learners, she's a hero without a cape. She will, uh, she will help us out uh, curating all these questions and, uh, and get them sorted. So this is all the housekeeping that I needed to do. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, Panos, would you like to start with a quick introduction of Learners? Yes, uh, hi everyone, this is Panos. I'm one of the co-founders and the CEO of LearnWolds. Uh, very, very briefly, LearnWolds is a Shopify for the knowledge economy. We're a platform where you can create, share and sell online courses. Uh, super easy platform, super user-friendly. It's uh, anyone with a, a piece of knowledge, something that they know they can very easily upload it in the platform. They can create a great looking a beautiful, high converting e-commerce uh, online school and start selling right out of the box. So uh, we, we are in 2021, all learning is going uh, digital and it's going to become e-learning. Uh, so we can be your platform for the, for the knowledge economy. Fantastic, thank you. And Paul, over to you. Would you like to tell us a bit more about Domino? Sure. And I'm Paul Schneider from Domino. Domino provides a cloud-based collaborative authoring tool. So you and all your team members can work together, collaborate. People you hire can come in there and build it. So you're going to control all that source material. Everything's all backed up and taken care of for you. With the system, you can build a fully responsive mobile first content or more traditional approach, software simulations. These can all be part of your learning. It provides a lot of advanced authoring capabilities to make it very engaging and interactive, as well as a lot of wizards and other things and templates to go ahead and help you out to create your content. So you can really make your content stand out, especially when you're going to position it and put it right into Learn Worlds, which of course you would publish as a SCORM package typically, and then load right into Learn Worlds there. And of course, where are they? Proud uh, winner of uh, many awards from uh, best authoring, best software sim, best LCMS many years in a row. And these are just some of our larger clients. System does allow anywhere from one author on up to hundreds of authors all collaborating and working together. Fantastic. Thank you for this. So it seems like a perfect match to understand better uh, about scores from head to toe. Uh, and as a matter of fact, um, when I received all the questions uh, that we got through the registration, I took the liberty to, um, to break them into topics uh, so that we can proceed with, with, a, certain, uh, with a certain logic. So um, the topics that we've identified are uh, basic benefits and well, basic functionalities of, uh, of SCORMS. So we can start uh, with 101. Uh, we have, of course, package creation, available formats, uh, publication on LMS, tracking and reporting, very important, and also uh, job availability and opportunities uh, around, uh, around forms. Uh, so I just suggest I'll stop sharing my screen right now, and we can start with the questions. 
So, uh, first question, it's really the most basic ones. Uh, what is core? Um, Harold, would you like to start? I, I can give it a shot. Uh, SCORM is a, a, a very handy standard and set of uh, a set of requirements for creating and exchanging educational content. Uh, so that uh, sounds a bit uh, academic and, uh, and a mouthful. The simple way to put it, it's a, it's a super handy uh, interoperable zip file that can include your uh, online content. You, in order to create a SCORM file, you need an authoring tool like, uh, like Domino. And then you, you end up with a nice little package that you can use across hundreds of different platforms that can support your content. So your content becomes more portable, interoperable, and you can use it anywhere uh, you want. Perfect. I think, and I'll add in uh, the acronym because SCORM is an, also an acronym is stands for Shareable Content Object Reference Model. Which, again, you don't need to really worry about that, but that's where it came from. And at the end of the day, it's uh, like today we're all speaking English. It's a standard language that allows your content to talk to your LMS, so everything is properly tracked, recorded, bookmarking, things like that. So. Um, yeah, what you do is record in the system and the system can report on what you're doing. Great. I, I think it's pretty clear. And also we have a few more questions about this and we have a tricky one coming right up. Are SCORMs an updated technology and is SCORM dead? <laughs> so right addressing the elephant in the room from the beginning. For you both. I, I, can, I, I can start that. It's very much alive uh, and kicking, and there are hundreds uh, and thousands of SCORM elements and SCORM objects being created every day. It is a standard. So when you're creating a standard that you want the most people to use, uh, you lose something in the, in, the, in the process. You cannot always follow you know, the, 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 the trends or the, the new technologies. However, a standard makes it so practical and so uh, ever present. Everybody can create. There are so many hundreds of tools that you can use to create your uh, SCORM content and also hundreds, if not thousands of tools that can play your SCORM content. So you might miss something. There might be some more flashy things that do more stuff, but uh, SCORM has been with us for, for more than 20 years. There's a, a, a millions of SCORM objects that, and lessons that have been created and many, many more are being created every, every, every day. And the interoperability and the user base, the established user base and all the tools that have been created around SCORM are what makes it an amazing tool even today for creating your online courses and making sure that everybody can consume them, that you can use them anywhere in, uh, in hundreds of different tools. Paul? Yeah, I'd just uh, share a little antidote to first. So when somebody was asking me about uh, SCORM and they said they figured that SCORM 1.2 was the newer version because when they saw SCORM 2004, they had to assume that's pretty darn old. Uh, but actually 1.2 was uh, made back in uh, 2001 and 2000, actually about 2002 or so. So yeah, the last version of SCORM was in 2004. And yes, there are newer standard available. I'll just mention it's XAPI, but SCORM is still the most popular standard. It does all the basic things. Of course, with mobile devices and other things, it does make it a little more complicated because it's an older technology, but most tools, they've developed ways to get around that and make it work. Um, again, newer stands moving there, but the great thing is most of the tools out there, they're not abandoning one standard as you move into another one and even enabling you to use both in the future there. Like Domino lets you use XAPI and SCORM at the same time. Uh, which is kind of handy there. So you don't have to worry about, you know, using a new thing and not uh, uh, being able to support the other one. But at the end of the day, it is the most popular standard. And, and if, I'm, if I may add, we should think you know, not as old. Yes, people say, oh, 2004, that's uh, like uh, age of the dinosaurs in, in computer, in the, in the computer world. But zip files have been around since 1989 and they do the work. They simply work Everybody can open them. Everybody can use them. So imagine the portability and uh, and and how extensive use you can uh, usage you can have 
by creating your educational content in a SCORM, uh, in a SCORM format. It's as simple as that. Perfect. And also, we have time to talk a little bit more about uh, formats in um, uh, in the next section. So we can definitely deep dive into this um, as well. Um, now I have a question from Ben, and uh, he would like to know how better to use like SCORM to well, sorry, how we can use SCORMs in order to improve uh, e-learning offerings. So is a more uh, business questions. Yeah, I'll answer that one there. So um, at the end of the day, what it does is it enables you to have content that can now be launched in multiple systems. So if you aren't using SCORM and maybe you're using a proprietary authoring solution that's tied directly to your portal where you're launching it, it works great there. But then this big customer comes, huge opportunity for you. And they say, well, that's fine, but we don't want all our 20,000 users to go log into your system. We want it to log into our portal or learning management system. And for you to be able to help them out and to sell and be successful, you're going to need a SCORM package to be able to load in there. Um, and I would say that's probably going to be 99% of the time. So it's really going to enable you back to what Panos was saying there is uh, be more compatible with the world. And that's that's what's going to benefit from a business side. Panos, do you have anything to add? I think we're I think, I think Paul covered that uh, expertly. Yeah. And so the next question is from the learner's point of view. Is there any specific benefit for the learner if as training companies or training entities, let's say we are using SCORMs? Or what do you think? For, for, for businesses, it's, a, it's an amazing possibility using SCORMs because you don't have to create all your content. And, and this is something that we, we saw recently, obviously, during COVID, while people were struggling in an emergency situation to try to teach people, create content. And it's not possible to create all the content if you don't have it. This digital transformation take time. And this is where libraries, amazing libraries of SCORM content can help you because you can uh, go get the ready-made blocks, uh, whether you want to teach your, your employees, your, your customers, your associates about cybersecurity, marketing, standard, safety, whatever. You can just find a provider out there, mix and match different contents and you can be up and running in, in seconds. And also as a, as a creator, you can just go out and create, uh, create your content in a SCORM format and you can sell it to many different, uh, different customers. And this, is, this has been also an amazing opportunity for students because they can get access to some high quality content uh, very, very, very fast. So I, I think this is, uh, this is what makes it so appealing, especially for, for business, the opportunity of having uh, access to ready-made content, complementing your own courses. You might have a new customer that comes to you and they want you to teach 10 classes. You might have the five, you might not have the rest, but you can find a library out there that can complement your, your, existing, uh, your existing courses. Um, sure. And we also had a question on the business side and usability about how, what's the percentage of companies using SCORMs? I think it's quite hard to pin it down, but it's closer to 100% than it is closer to 90%, I would say. So it's really in that top level. Um, any Almost any system you purchase these days is going to support SCORM. The, the exceptions are kind of a 100% self-contained system. And even some of those support SCORM too. So it's going to be highly unusual. And it's going to enable you to use all those different packages that we were mentioned previously, but also to use other authoring tools. Say you were like, oh, wow, I'm excited about Domino. You're going to know that, hey, I can use that with uh, your other systems that you would purchase or your um, people you're selling to will be able to use that content. Right. So and if I may, sorry, sorry, if I may add from the, from, uh, from the side of our own platform, we cannot afford not to be SCORM compatible and not support SCORM because more and more businesses are coming with, um, with us with, uh, with SCORM objects. However, as a platform, we also have our own uh, authoring tools. And, and there, in some cases, you can make it much easier for, for people to, to create content. You can use lots of the like modern techniques and, uh, and easier things. They will miss some of the interoperability. It will not always be easy for them to, uh, to export things and move them to another platform or, or copy them to, to another 
to, to, to another system. So people have to, to see, to find the trade-off and the balance, whether they go with a separate authoring tool and create a, a, a SCORM file, this is the safe business savvy option, especially for bigger systems where you have lots of courses and moving might be, uh, might be crucial, but also lots of systems like LearnWorlds offer uh, the possibility of content authoring with the tools of the platform, where in some cases there might be a huge upside in uh, interactivity or engagement or uh, let's say innovation, but you have to be mindful of what this would mean in case you need to move out to another system or you need to export or you need to, to make something interoperable. Um, so moving on from, uh, we have a next question from Erdo, which is asking, how can I create interactive material using SCORMS? So probably Paul, you want to get started? Yeah, so um, SCORM itself doesn't have any impact positive or negative really on interactive material. What it does indirectly is if your system is SCORM compatible, it enables you to use any authoring tool. So, um, you know, your tool may have a built-in authoring capability um, and it may do everything you want, or it may not have that interactivity that you really want. And, but if you don't have SCORM, you can't use a third party tool like Domino. But if you do, then you can using Domino. And so with Domino, uh, for example, it has built in widgets where you can make a one on one scenario just by answering and typing in the questions and, you know, dry, drawing where it actually branches to, to creating uh, fully engaging content uh, where anything on the page you want can click and do just about anything. So um, it really just enables you to have more choices to create content that is interactive. Um, in and it itself doesn't do anything from interactivity. Uh, so do we have also um, ready-made courses for SCORM? This is Sarah asking. Yeah, and that's, uh, we, we alluded to that a little bit earlier, but yeah, there's a lot of off-the-shelf content available, which is pretty awesome when you're your portal supports SCORM um, and you have a couple different options. So the, the standard is you can go out to a, a library or a third party provider, or sometimes your LMS like Learn Worlds will have options for you and you can purchase this off the shelf content ready made to go. It's pretty awesome. Um, some other things that you're starting to see and, and one thing that Domino does is that they have some partners that provide off the shelf content, but you can also edit and change it right within your Domino authoring system. So if you get that off the shelf security course or diversity course, but you have some specific things you really wanna emphasize or you wanna brand it, um, usually that's difficult or sometimes impossible or cost or prohibitive with standard off the shelf. But in that particular case, you could actually edit it completely in Domino. But either way, uh, SCORM is what enables you to get that off the shelf content and then load it into your system, no matter what system it is. And those are usually uh, priced based off of how many learners are taking your content in annual subscriptions. Fantastic. Um, we have more questions uh, about how to create SCORMs and how to use them in LMS, but I feel that we kind of covered this. So do you want to wrap this yeah, up? Yeah, I'll give you a, just a quick uh, one, two, three. Uh, you use your authoring tool, that authoring tool, most all authoring tools today have a publish option to publish a SCORM. You literally pick publish and LMS or publish SCORM. You might probably need to know what standard like 1.2 or 2004, and there's a couple of editions your system supports. Pick that option, creates that zip package. Some systems will automatically send the zip package over, but minimally you'll download it navigate to your system, upload that SCORM package and assign learners. And that's pretty much it, all there is to it. Um, and on this, I have a live question, actually, I would like to answer right now since it's relevant. Uh, so Nico is asking, when I have my SCORM loaded, can I edit it and change it directly in Learn Worlds? Uh, no because uh, you need a, a third party and external tool, usually the tool where you created the original SCORM like Domino where you can, you can do that. So LearnWorlds can help you play, it's the player, it's like the video player. We can help you play and present 
all the all, all your score content and also track any quizzes that you might have there or any final grade, any pass fail decision at the end of this self-contained SCORM unit. But if you want to change it, then you go back to the original tool where it was created. So if you take something that is off the shelf, you probably cannot take it. If you're somewhere halfway, like Paul mentioned before, where you can, you have a flexibility and you can customize, uh, you can customize the content, put your own logo, put your own, uh, like change, change the wording, put your own photos, then you can probably get your own branded version and re-upload it into a player like LearnWalls or another learning management system. Um, yeah, and I'll just uh, add, because um, <laughs> it really adds to the question that Rachel just asked there too. Mm -hmm. So typically, yeah, you're going to edit it in your authoring tool, Domino, whatever. You're going to republish it, re-upload it to the LMS, and there's going to be a setting to where you can apply it to new learners, et cetera, there. Some systems like Domino, um, actually have what we call a dynamic delivery option too. So we have what we call a SCORM stub and think of it like a link or a pointer. You can uh, load it to what we call our convey system, load the pointer, and that works just like a SCORM package into the LMS. But what it's doing, instead of having all the guts and content there, it's pointing out to a server that's hosted by Domino. And it all behaves the same, but the great thing is the next time you go to update the content, you simply hit publish and then you're done because it actually publishes the update to the hosted content. And because it's kind of like a video almost where it's linked, it's just linking it to the new one. So if you're updating a lot of content and making changes, a lot of courses, uh, as you can imagine, even though uploading is not a big task, it uh, exponentially adds up. So yeah, that can be a huge saver. There's a few tools out there, not a lot, but Domino is one of them that has an option like that. Great. Um, and also we got a question about how to monetize the content that we create on, uh, on sports. Uh, yeah, so, so the modify is what we add. So you can't modify it right within the system. No, no, no sorry, sorry, modify. monetize. Yeah, exactly. Monetize. So monetize. I think one is a uh, <laughs> Yeah, oh. so monetize really gets back to not SCORM, but it enables you to bring another system. So I'm going to just hand it off here. I think this is this is where a, a platform like LearnWalls makes perfect sense because LearnWalls is not just an LMS. It, it is an LMS, but it has been designed specifically for creating and selling online courses. So it's a, it's an e-commerce system with an LMS tied to it. So you can upload your SCORM content and package it uh, within a course and put a price sticker to it. You can sell courses, individual courses. You can sell bundles of courses where like uh, pay two, buy three, whatever, uh, get one for free. You can create subscriptions and uh, uh, create uh, the, the holy grail for creators, which is the, the, uh, the recurring revenue. You can have a subscription plan for $90, $99 per month, giving to students access to uh, unlimited, unlimited courses. So all the content can be created in a, in a, in a SCORM format, in, in a tool like Domino, you upload it and we take care of the e-commerce functionality. Like people can go in, they can sign up to courses, they can use coupons, they can use subscriptions. You can use all the bells, the bells and whistles of an e-commerce system on top of the content that you have created in a SCORM format or any other format for that matter. But in this case, since we're talking about SCORM, you can sell SCORM files, which will be delivered within the, the, Lear, the LearnWalls uh, LMS. Yeah, and also, Panos, correct me if I'm wrong, I think we have a few examples within our clients that uh, created the, um, the score file for internal use because they wanted to train their own employees. And then they actually realized it was very good content. So they actually started selling it to similar companies. So it, it, there's a, also this side of things like uh, yes. you, you, other class. You're you're absolutely right. I think that we we have seen that too many times now. So it's it's a pattern. People have amazing content. They use it internally. They come to us and say, "Okay, we're not selling content. We just want to train our employees. Uh, we'll, so we'll just leave all the e-commerce features out there. We will just not use them. Is this okay?" And we say, "Yes, okay, obviously." And then they start thinking and saying, "Okay, we have this amazing content, but we can also sell it. So we are perhaps a bigger business. We have." 
trainings internally. We do internal training about, I don't know, marketing, compliance, conflict resolution, uh, uh, safety in the, in the workplace or whatever. So why not go out and find similar businesses in our space that are smaller? They don't have the capacity that we have. They don't have all this amazing content and, and sell it to them. So internal training and HR or L&D or whatever training role within a business can become a source of revenue. So this is a very nice case where people can realize that they have this amazing content and they can monetize it. Perhaps it's not, they, they don't start with that, with that purpose, uh, some of them, uh, but this is a new way of thinking about how you can bring extra value from your content to your, to your business. Indeed. Completely different now. We were actually like asking like more um, uh, how to say detailed questions. Uh, Hubert is asking, could they use a SCORM uh, to create a gap fill activity? And at the same time, through the chat, I think he's the same Hubert. Uh, he's also asking if we can read them through tablet, mobile, and computer. I assume also Mac, since we are at it. Um, I'll, since Hubert's here, I'm not familiar with the term gap fill, so it might be I used think it means way. like, you know, when you have a sentence, for fill example, in the gap, like write a, oh, write a word, it's probably fill this the is. Gap activity. So like as a question. Yeah. yeah. So again, uh, yeah, fill in the blanks. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for the a gap there. <laughs> yeah. So the uh, short answer to that is it's not SCORM dependent per se, um, your authoring tool needs to support that. So with Domino, um, there's a number of different question types that you can have. One of them is a fill in the, we call it fill in the blank, uh, but yeah, fill in the gap or fill in the blank or fill the gap is the same thing where it's a sentence completion. You can add that in. If it is a test question in SCORM, uh, SCORM does report on test question details, and most LMSs, not all, will go ahead and report those results. Likewise, most authoring tools do send that information, but not all. But if it does send it, you'll be able to get not only the score, but see what the person typed in for that. Um, and usually for those types of questions, um, and I'll just show you how Domino does it, um, there's an exact correct answer, and usually they're not case sensitive, but um, some systems like Domino do allow you to have alternates. Like for example, if the answer was fill in the blank, you could say gap and blank are both correct answers for that. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Um, and well, let's keep on with the package creation. Um, could you uh, probably Paul, give us a, an overview of publishing settings? Yeah, so publishing settings are really typically on the authoring side, but there are also some settings in the LMS too sometimes. And this is because even though SCORM is a standard, there are things that have been left open to interpretation. And so you find out it's not exact. So for example, when SCORM 2004 came out, it corrected some interpretations or it basically enhanced it so you didn't have to guess. And what has happened is different authoring tools like Domino have different published profile settings. And in Domino, you can set up multiple ones and they're stored so you don't have to change per desktop system or whatever, but you can set up those profiles. So if you have an LMS that behaves slightly differently, Domino has some different settings to accommodate that in their interpretation of SCORM. Sometimes this also has things like, hey, for these projects or, or courses, I want to allow three test attempts or unlimited or let them review the answers. And, th and those can also be settings, but those aren't directly related to SCORM. Okay. And if, if I may add here, depending yes. on the platform where you load the LMS, you might have extra settings on top. For example, if you add a, an LMS, a, a SCORM in, into LearnWorlds, um, Paul mentioned before that there is different levels of reporting. So we might get the final grade, we might get a pass or fail. Uh, we, we're not, LearnWorlds per se doesn't get the precise words you try to type, to type in, the fill in, the, in the fill in the blank. However, on top of that, we can add our own settings for when you're passing in a test, like, I don't know, randomizing uh, different, uh, different SCORM units or having attempts having certain extra extra limits on top of, uh, of SCORM. And uh, definitely, whatever you publish, you should test it with your platform. Sco or not all SCORMs are created equal. 
there are different tools that have different interpretation of the settings like Paul mentioned. So uh, even if it's like ideally a standard, it's not an ideal world. So you should definitely try it, upload it to your, to your platform, make sure that you test it in different uh, devices, mobile devices, tablet devices, not all of them can support it. LearnWorlds can support, it's fully mobile friendly. It, it adapts optimally to uh, mobile devices and tablet devices. However, if the SCORM itself doesn't support it, then the platform cannot do much if the original content doesn't support. So you should experiment with the, with the, with the settings, uh, try a few things, export the, the, the different files, test, test them, upload them in the platform and make sure that they are that they're working so that you offer an, a, a, an optimal experience to your, to your students. And I would just add to that mobile item in SCORM and mobile, think SCORM is back from 2002, three and four and mobile devices really didn't exist. So do make sure you're testing. There are some things that sometimes may work perfectly fine, but on a mobile device won't as work. Most systems have accommodated and do that, but I do recommend testing. And then the one part that's still a little bit different is if you wanna have a mobile device to take the content offline disconnected and not connected to the internet, um, you can use SCORM for that, but it does require some pretty advanced changes in terms of a mobile app to do that. And so that's not something that's super popular with a lot of systems out there. Domino has a system that uh, can be integrated with third party uh, with that. But again, that's one of the reasons XAPI was developed because it uses new standard to make that whole process very easy. But that's probably the one that's kind of a, if you really need offline disconnected because, hey, you're folks are on an oil rig or something like that, you're going to need to make sure that works with your learning management system and, of course, the authoring content. Perfect. Um, I have to say, I have here quite a few questions that are very details about, detailed about um, settings and so on, uh, but I fear that we're going to miss the whole picture given to time. So if everybody allows me, I'm going to skip a little bit ahead, and then if we have like a little bit more time, we will go into specifics back again. You may now need a uh, part two, huh? <laughs> yes, it's a lot of questions that we received. Sequel, sequel. So uh, I'm going to go through a popular questions. Are there any free affordable tools for me? Are there any what? Say free again. slash affordable tools. Um. So yeah, there are some, I'm trying to think, uh, I know there are some free authoring tools out there. Authoring tools are relatively expensive or inexpensive, but I suppose that depends on your point of view. But most authoring tools uh, are around, for a single license, around $1,000 uh, annual subscription, give or take. Some also have monthly subscriptions. Domino does have a monthly subscription option if you only have a single author. Um, but um, yeah, in terms of authoring tools, the, the key thing is make sure it does have SCORM and test it with your system. Um, and, and then in terms of launching it with the LMS systems, uh, there's a few things, but again, it's all gonna be a, you know, very small audience or very small authoring in terms of that. And also yeah, depending and on the tool, sometimes what you pay is what you get. So if, yes. you, if, if, you, need a, <laughs> if you need a modern tool, there used to be many more free authoring tools back in the day like yes, two, 2004 but it's extremely difficult to keep you know innovating and keep adding features and making sure that you're uh, you remain compatible so if you take a scorm from 2004 you can probably load it into a modern platform today but as you can imagine the resolution things like mobile uh, support are not there so uh, the modern tools can obviously add lots more interactivity it's not required by scorm but they give you more degrees of freedom so a tool like domino is uh, uh, the things that you can do there uh, are nowhere near what you might be able to do with a with a free with a free tool i, yeah, I haven't checked the what is out there right now but it's for later. <laughs> there, there, there's nothing out there in authoring that uh, the closest thing out there in authoring that would be to like moodle where that's a fairly robust system but even though it's free you still have to manage your own. The free is never free, as we all know. Uh, but the closest out there would be there's an open source project called Adapt, um, and that's available. But again, 
Uh, just to give you an idea, there's a paid version of ADAPT called, I think it's ADAPT Builder, uh, because folks wanted support, they wanted some additional capabilities, they didn't want some of the pain that come with had to compile the software, so. In terms of freedom, this will give me a bridge to go to also the next topic about formats. Uh, maybe we can start, well, we've been asked also what is the difference in production process among form HTML5 and uh, XAPI. So I know SCORM comes, uh, sorry, uh, HTML5 comes for free, or at least like some of it, they can be um, out, uh, outsourced. Um, do you have any direction that you can give? Like, yeah, I'll add first off, uh, HTML5 and SCORM are not related. Um, other than the fact of back in the day, people usually developed SCORM packages at Flash. Uh, because that was the technology a lot of folks use. So HTML5 is the web standard. Um, an HTML5 package by itself just runs and runs, but it doesn't communicate to the system. If it's an HTML5 that has SCORM technology in it or XAPI, that's what enables that package to actually talk and communicate in a standard language. And then when it comes to performance, uh, that's a bit tricky um, in terms of it because there's a lot of factors and it's hard to also figure out where the problem is. But um, in all cases, it's sending that data to the system. And um, in the cases of SCORM and XAPI, it's um, a factor of how much data it's sending, how often, but then how many people are taking it. So a system that runs just fine and you have a thousand users, if all of a sudden you added 500,000 users, that system may be fine or it may fall over and die uh, because of all the traffic. And, and if the 500,000 users aren't taking the course at the same time, then it'd be fine, but if they're all taking the same time. So it more has to do with network traffic um, and the systems involved in it. Um, sometimes there are things that tools can do to increase or decrease the traffic, but really it comes down to those systems that you're using. Um, and, and the reality is from a modern standpoint, XAPI, for example, was designed to send a lot of information. And so if your system isn't handling a lot of information, then that's probably something that needs to be more robust uh, because the whole idea is to collect more data and move into the world of big data like marketing and other people have done. Right. If, if I may contribute something here, HTML5, uh, maybe like beautiful presentation, but it's dumb. It doesn't remember anything. So if you refresh, it will start again. So if you if you uh, if you want to have tests and report data, report the progress. If you want your online learning, the learning unit that you are creating this this particular lesson to remember things, so that you can start using it on your. A desktop device and then you can take your lap your your ipad and and sit on the sofa and continue from where you left off then you need the SCORM that remembers communicates with the lms and reports if you have very simple presentation something like bite-sized content where it's just a small video or a nice interaction or even a nice little simulation where you don't mind if like it forgets and you have to start it again, then you can get away with HTML5. There are more tools there, more things that you can do. LearnWorld supports also HTML, HTML5, so it really depends on, uh, uh, depends on, on what you, you want to do there. Excellent. Um, and then I have a more complicated question, but so can older version be overwritten by newer version without change to completion? Which I think means uh, yeah, I understand that one. Okay. Yeah, so they're saying, hey, can I, if somebody already finished the course and it's tracking and marking completion in the system, can I update the course? And the answer is it depends. Generally, it's yes. But what happens is you upload that package and then your system like War Learn Worlds is going to have different settings like, hey, do you want that update to apply perhaps to all learners or just to new learners? But even if it's applying to an existing learner, generally speaking, it's going to keep that completed status and not change it. That's kind of one of those things that almost no one wants that to change. So most systems have said, hey, once I get the complete, it never changes. 
unless I refresh the registration. So that's usually something you don't have to worry. And I, I see some nodding. So I'm assuming Learn Worlds yeah. does that same thing. We, we, we I learned, I, I guess we also learned from the, from the customer feedback what we what they wanted to do. So obviously we checked all the LMSs, how people treat it. So if somebody has completed their course, going back and tell the, telling them that, no, no, they haven't completed and they have to return and they have received the certificate perhaps, it's never a good idea. So uh, you can, yes, you can upload a new SCORM replacing an existing uh, SCORM, uh, SCORM lesson. If a person has already completed it, this check remains there. If they go in and they start playing around with the SCORM, yeah, at that point, the SCORM will wake up and say, oh, I haven't been completed. So this is really, we, we leave it up to the, to the user. If you want them, however, uh, if you want to, to make it mandatory that they complete the new lesson, then usually you have to create a new learning unit, upload the new one and delete and delete the previous uh, the previous uh, uh, lesson, uh, the previous SCORM unit. This will make it mandatory for all people who are currently or were previously subscribed to this course to go back in and 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 fill. So it it depends. You can play around. You can ask, and uh, there are depending on what you want to accomplish. Uh, playing around with the settings will get you there. And the advantage, the last piece I should just mention is. It's all about tracking. So in that case, you're going to know that they took the earlier version. And then since it's a new unit, you're going to know they took the, uh, the later version and be able to separate that information. Um, well, let's, let's continue with tracking then. I have a mm -hmm. different section, but uh, let's move on with this. Sure. Uh, actually, then can we deep dive a little bit more into actually what we can track? Mm. And can be tracked. So, both so again, uh, remember this is a SCORM is a team effort. Uh, <laughs> so it's what the author or the authoring tool is pitching out in terms of data, and then what the uh, the learning system is catching in terms of the data. But um, largely speaking, what SCORM allows you to track is completion. Did they did they is it not started? Did they start it but haven't finished it? Called incomplete. Did they complete it? Um, and then it's also usually, did they complete it and pass or did they fail? And there's some variations in there. And then also if there is a score, like there was a test, like a fill in the blank question, um, there would be a score between zero and hundred. So it's hundred and that's percentage essentially on there. Um, where you get into more details and where you can get some fun things that depends on the system is those question details. So that can track like individual test questions, like what they what the questions were, did they get it right or wrong? What did they respond for the question? How long did they spend on the question? Um, and then that's too where you start to get some variations between SCORM 1-2 and 2004. Um, two of the big things that 2004 added, but again, both systems have to send the data and report on it is in 2004, those test questions, you can also get the test question text. So in other words, what was the question asked? And one, two, it just has an ID. And so unless you know what those questions are, it's hard to tell sometimes. And then the second thing is in 2004, they have two statuses. Do they complete it or incomplete? And did they pass or fail? In other words, you could complete it and pass, but you could also complete it and fail. And because you only had three attempts and you failed every single attempt. In one, two, there isn't a direct way to go ahead and collect that information. So some systems have figured out a way to interpret it, but it can leave, you know, questions. Is that incomplete? Because they ran out of attempts or what? But 2004 actually uh, spelled it out into two separate areas and, and made it easier for systems to report on it if they support it. Well, two, two, as we mentioned in the beginning, 204 seems to be uh, very uh, far in the past, uh, but it's, a, it's the latest version. And actually, it, it's good for the sake of compatibility that we don't have a 2008 and 2016 and a 2020. It could have been worse. They changed the numbering, uh, but th that's the, like, if you're creating something today, uh, you should save it, export it, publish it as, uh, as uh, 2004. Yeah, um, actually, uh, Panos, do you want to go through also the what we track in learn mode specifically? Yes, it's uh, it's everything that uh, that Paul mentioned, except the the ideas of the, of the actual textual answers that that somebody gave. That's something that we're not uh, that we're not tracking. 
it's we have tied the reporting of um, of, of SCORM with our amazing analytics. Uh, I uh, I might uh, sound like bragging here, but within LearnWolves we have an amazing uh, reporting system that is. Uh, you usually find it in, uh, I don't know, LMSs that cost 10 or 50 times what you get. So it's a, a, actually, it's a new system. It was built precisely for being able to answer amazing complex questions that are important for your courses. So be, being able to, try to, to see the progress of the students, their engagement, uh, what is their interaction within the course or with the learning community or with the community that, that is supporting the course, and also time. Time... Uh, uh, SCORMs notoriously are not good at reporting time. So we use the built-in system of SCORM for reporting time spent within a learning unit, but we have also complemented that uh, uh, with, with our own timing. So uh, there is a setting there that allows you to override the, uh, the some, uh, sometimes flawed uh, way of SCORMs to, to report how much time a student spend in there and use our own timing, which is more accurate. So you can uh, create some amazing scenarios, some amazing reports of like, who are the students who spent less than five minutes within this form unit? And there you can build an intervention uh, there. You can just offer them support, give them some encouragement, ask them to just go back and spend a bit more time and interact, try a bit, uh, a couple more times with this particular test. So uh, we get everything that SCORMS reports. It's uh, uh, nice to have the, the, the progress and the score, but we have tied this with our own grade book and with our own data analytics system. So I think uh, people will be able to create some very useful reports, very actionable on how they can improve their courses and how they can help their students stay engaged and complete the actual course. I would just add that, uh, yeah, I did forget time. Time is also something that's pretty standard record. And um, what was just described is not uh, typical for every system. So that is something when you're out there shopping around trying to figure out a solution, um, having something that collects all that SCORM data that we just talked about, but also enables you to take that data and you know create your own reports or tie it into other data that the system's creating because um, a lot of systems just uh, compartmentalize that and don't allow you to bring them together. So that's a pretty awesome feature that's not always available um, for all the systems. True, and um, well, we kind of touched base on it before, but I'm just gonna spell out this question from Chad as well. Uh, can we track persistence? The answer is yes. I think persistence is uh, did it like where did I leave off from? Um, and if that's what you mean, like bookmarking, then yes, certainly that's a key thing. That's not really data that's reported on, uh, but it's really important to the learner that they can leave and then come back where they left off. Um, and then it'll remember different things, like if you had a certain score or a certain activity that remember the activity. And uh, yeah, SCORM has something called session data. That's kind of just a big blob of data. And so authoring tools can sit, put whatever they want to track, like the last page they were in, into that. And then uh, the LMS just says, hey, I'm going to store whatever you, whatever you send. And when you ask for it, I'm going to return it back. And it enables that. So um, if there's something that you want to persist that's not persisting, um, that's not really a SCORM thing. That's the authoring solution not tracking that particular piece of information. Uh, and if, if, I may, if I may add, Sarah, because mm -hmm. some folks might not know that, uh, uh, LearnWolves didn't use to support persistency in SCORM. So people were asking us for, for that, uh, for asking us for SCORMs. We had done initially a much simpler implementation. Supporting mm -hmm. SCORM is something of a, quite a heavy weight for a lightweight LMS system like our own, where people usually were creating their own content. They were using our amazing built-in authoring tools like interactive videos, where you can just get a video, take it to the next level, add interactivity. More and more people were asking for SCORM. So initially we went with a lightweight, non-persistent implementation, essentially dumb SCORMs, where if you just refreshed, you had lost your progress. Still, even that was sufficient for most people to do their work I mean, that was uh, obviously something that they were missing, but they were happy to do it because other platforms didn't offer that. But we have now more than one year where, where we have up, up, uh, like rebuilt our entire SCORM player. We support persistency. It's helping more and more people to play more complex SCORM files with uh, their own 
uh, navigation probably within uh, systems uh, where, where uh, like uh, things that you can do in Domino. And to, to enhance that, we have even created a specific course type where we totally remove our own navigation options, like all the menu, usually like on the left-hand side, the usual metaphor where you just click and go back and forward. So if you have created an amazing SCORM experience uh, with, a, with a tool like Domino, where perhaps there is a, a, its own, uh, it has its own navigation uh, uh, facilities, or it's like, a, I don't know, a, 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 something like a simulation, then you can really embed it into a full frame within LearnWorld. So we remove ourselves, we stay in the back, and then we, le we, we let the SCORM created by the authoring tool with its own uh, interactivity be the main show, be in center stage. Yeah, and when you're looking for a solution, you definitely want it a solution that has that as an option. Uh, if it doesn't have that as an option, uh, that can be really annoying for the learners because they end up having two sets of navigation. So that, that is an important thing uh, to look for. And, and that's fairly common, but not all tools have that. Perfect. Um, so always think on, on tracking. Um, I think um, Paul, this is mostly for you. Esther okay. is asking how to update learning results for learners from different clients who each have their own LMS. Mm. So I think I just going to rephrase it, make sure I heard right, is that if they all have their own LMS, how can I get the results from all the different folks? Is that right? Yeah. So yes. the, the tricky, the, the short answer LMS. is it's complicated. Um, but um, if they're all in their own LMS, it's going to be sending data there. And that's where SCORM's really not going to help you. However, there are options. Um, so one way that some of our customers, Domino customers have done is I mentioned earlier on that Domino allows you to track both SCORM data and XAPI data. Um, well, what you can do is you can give them a SCORM package so they can track and do all those things, but you can have it track XAPI data and that XAPI data can be sent back to a central learning record store that you manage. And then in your central system, you can see all that data. Um, so that would be by far the easiest and keeping with standards way to do that. Um, not a lot of systems out there do it. Domino is one of the few that does that out of the box. Some you can do it, but you have to do programming in there. And you might be asking, well, how can I get all this SCORM data? Why do I have to bring XAPI in? Um, because of the way SCORM is designed, it can really only send it to the one system. Um, and because of the way it's designed, most systems, it's very, very, very rare that those systems even have a way to export that data out. So um, I wouldn't even bark up that tree to go ahead and try to find a solution. I would definitely look to XAPI combined with SCORM um, and that's going to give you everything they need. They don't have to worry about the fact that uh, they maybe don't support XAPI, and then you can get all that information directly. Perfect. Very interesting. So, um, well, we jumped the publication question in order to do all the tracking. So now we go back into publication. Um, what is the best way to protect the IP of your SCORM files while selling a course? Kate is asking. You want to take that one first or I can too, either way. Uh, uh, for, first of all, a, a general comment that once you put something on a screen of a, of a, of a, of a computer, there aren't much you can do to, to protect your, uh, your, uh, your intellectual property. So it depends on what level of protection we're talking about. We, we see a Hollywood, a Hollywood movie uh, like launching on Friday and then on uh, on Saturday or, or or Sunday it's probably around the world and people can download it from strange uh, places. So anything that can be shown on a like if you have a movie showing on a, on a screen, you can somebody can probably uh, record it. Uh, what we're doing in LearnWorld, we have tried uh, everything like the state of the art that is uh, that is out there. Uh, Trying to protect courses, how they're being how they're being played, how people access the courses, how people purchase uh, purchase uh, courses. Obviously, there's no way to 
like this also depends on the on the authoring tool and whether people can just copy paste text from 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 there but i guess we're not talking from from something as simple as that so people cannot get access to the to the original score but as you play uh, uh, as you as a student plays a course anything that you show can be copied that's the, that's the end of the day uh, but the the full experience of what you have created uh, should probably be something that nobody can copy like the the burden of create of recreating something that you have created should be uh, should be quite high so people would come to you and get your original scorm file and uh, and uh, and uh, and use that i understand that in some parts of the world protecting ip is a much more difficult thing to do like there is lots of copying and people launch a course and then usually you you get like very bad copies of that uh, of that online course uh, proliferating in uh, in most uh, in most countries in most developed countries this is something that doesn't happen once you create something it's uh, it's uh, it's like uh, uh, especially when you're talking about uh, business customers it's something that is uh, uh, that is uh, respected so that, that's a, a general comment i guess on on ipr and uh, and anything that is shown on the web yeah, and I'll just add kind of, I find two scenarios. One is, and they're similar to everything, is, hey, I don't want them to be able to copy the screen. And to be clear, there are some technologies that can turn off everything in screen copy there. But the reality is there's things that that learner would have to install to even do that. And it's incredibly onerous. So you're going to defeat everything you're trying to accomplish from that. So you're going to have to accept that they could do screenshots I mean, Domino has an option to turn off the right click and a few simple things to go ahead and copy from there. But at the end of the day, if that is the copy production you're looking for, um, you're going to have to rethink things. The second is, hey, I want to give that SCORM package off to a company because they want to load in their LMS. And there's really two things. One is there are some systems. Uh, Russacy has like a back end system. You know, there's going to be a big cost involved into it and ecosystem to go ahead and manage that. Um, Domino has that convey option where you can give just the pointer instead of the full package. Or if you get the package, just have an agreement that says you have the right to audit them. Um, most of the you know countries and people you work with, they're going to be fine. They don't want to be in, I mean, legal, legal things are just problematic. But you put that into your agreement, and that usually solves that problem. But again, uh, understand your audience. Absolutely. We have so many more questions, but it's also uh, 57 past the hour. So I kind of feel that we need to wrap up. Uh, however, we will get back to all the questions that we didn't manage to answer, either with a new se session or answering individually by, via email. We, we will definitely get back to everyone because these are very, very interesting questions. I can skim them through and uh, absolutely, no one will go unnoticed. Um, however, we do have a treat. So I'm going to start sharing my uh, screen again. It's the offer time. Uh, Paul, Panas, do you want to talk through the offers that we have here? Yeah, since I'm on the left, I'll, I'll go ahead and read left, look right there. Yeah, so we're for everyone who attended, if they're interested in a authoring solution that enables them to create the SCORM packages and a whole bunch more, we're offering 50% off on your first uh, annual subscription license. And so that if you buy one or you buy five authors, you can get 50% off on that. Just contact us, uh, mention that uh, you were attended here. We'll also send a follow-up email with a little more details about that and mentioning the offer for everyone who attended or, or attended and uh, signed up for the recording. Perfect. Um, Alex? Uh, for us, October is a, a super exciting month. We are super excited to be launching our uh, white label native mobile applications for online schools and this is something that we're the only ones offering in the in the industry so you will not be getting a learn Worlds app but you will be getting your own mobile app both ios and, and android uh, and your courses will be uh, at the hands of uh, a couple of billion people through through mobile devices 
So make sure that all your SCORM contents are mobile friendly and you use an amazing tool like uh, Domino to, to create them because we can show them not only on your website and on your online school, but also on the, on the mobile app that we will be launching. So as part of this like super exciting month for us, this is an offer tied to the mobile app, a free publishing service, which is usually because it's like a very expensive thing to launch a mobile application. We will be doing that for free for you. And then a 25% lifetime discount on the, on the subscription of the mobile application, which is usually an add on on your normal LearnWorlds uh, subscription. So uh, valid throughout the month of October. Uh, you can contact us. We will also be announcing this offer later in the month. Uh, you have access to it from now. If you need any clarification, you can always contact our team and we'll be happy to elaborate, happy to show you how the, the mobile apps uh, uh, are working and uh, what you can do with them. And we're talking about mobile apps with uh, very soon uh, in-app notifications and, uh, and also in-app purchases, push notifications and in-app purchases. So this is a game changer for the, for the industry. Fantastic. And of course, you will have uh, emails about this too, so you can access the link and get the and get the discount. Sorry, Paul, I interrupted you. I was just going to say, yeah, there. Somebody's asking about how they can unlock it, so you just answer that question. You're going to send out those yes. emails. <laughs> okay. We didn't, we didn't want somebody to leave without that capability. Absolutely not. Fantastic. So, um, unless there is any anything else you want to add, panels and uh, and Paul. For me, I, just, I, I would, so, sorry, Paul, because as, as a guest, it would, it, it's fitting for you to like have the, the final say. I, I know that SCORM, you know, an acronym might not uh, sound very sexy as a technology coming all the way back from 2004, but it's, it's an amazing business tool for you. This is a standard that can help your business uh, grow. So it's not, uh, it's a standard. It's something that helps us do our job easier and, uh, and uh, like help our content proliferate, reach more students, reach more, more customers. I hope we, will be able, we were able today to answer most of your questions uh, uh destroy a couple of myths and give you a better understanding that's not something to fear go out there test tools like domino and also uh, tools like like LearnWorlds. there are so much amazing educational technology out there uh, tools that can make your job so much easier so much more interesting and help you create amazing uh, content so i hope that today we were able to give you an extra understanding of what is happening and give you the, the push to go out test things and create some amazing content. Paul? Yeah, thanks. And I just want to say thanks for uh, bringing me in as a guest today. It's uh, always fun, especially have an audience that has so many, I'll, I'll say, engaging and uh, challenging questions. Uh, SCORM is a standard, but there are idiosyncrasies about it. And at the end of the day, uh, companies like both of ours, our goal is so you can focus on creating and making the learning and information available and do the cool things that you want to do. And you don't have to worry about most of these things in there. Um, and then uh, I always say software as a service is not just great software, but it's great service. And so having resources that can answer these questions there and you know you're in good hands. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much then, uh, Paul Panos. It has been an absolute pleasure to have you here today. We got some really good insights to work on. We have even more insights that will be sent out afterwards. Um, as I said, we will be in touch for the recording uh, on Monday and for the offers. Uh, so if you have any further comments, please don't hesitate to, to get in touch. We'll be happy to help you. Thank you everyone once again. It's been a pleasure. Bye-bye. Have a good evening, good night, good rest of the day. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah, for being an amazing hostess and organizing this. And also thanks, uh, Renata, who managed to, to field in all those uh, questions. It was super interesting. Stay safe, everyone. Uh, see you soon. Bye-bye.